Hey, Dan here. Um, I want to talk to you about how to use an alert to start a workflow. Super common use case. Oftentimes we've got, uh, we have workflows that we want to kick off based on uh, certain values, anomalies, different occurrences within our data. And an alert is an absolutely fantastic way to do that. Let's take a look at a card first. Um, alerts, as you know, can be uh, created on a card or on a data set. And either of those can be wired up to initiate a workflow. Let's take a look at, let's just uh, grab one of these at random, uh, sales, sales trend by day. You can see we've already got some alerts here that have triggered. I'm gonna create a new alert um, and we will call it uh, workflow demo alert. Really creative, I know. Um, we're gonna trigger this one off of the summary number and I'm gonna say that I wanna know, you know when it changes by five. Again, not really worried about uh, the validity of the alert here. And I'm actually not super worried about the message because in this case, it's not an alert that I'm actually going to receive. I'm just going to use it to uh, initiate a process. You can see I've got this attach action button here, and it presents me with a few options, one of which is workflow. If I choose that, you can see I can see all the different uh, names and versions of the workflows that I've got deployed and available to me. Now, if I grab, you know, this guy here, this test workflow created five months ago by, by Stu, um, there are no required input parameters for this workflow. So pretty straightforward, I just hit next and it'll run. Um, if I do choose a workflow, like this IoT device checking workflow, it's got some required start parameters, and we've got a separate video on that, that's another topic. Uh, but you can map values from your alert into those parameters. Now, it's a little bit more challenging to do from a card because we get such uh, little information from a card alert. But from data set alerts, as you know, you can essentially pass any column, uh, the value in that column associated with the row that initiated that alert right along. So I'm going to close this one. I'm going to go, we'll take a look at a data set alert. We'll grab one that I've already got configured here. Uh, we'll take a look at this at, at this guy. And again, you can see I've, I've got a workflow attached to that. And I'm passing some values uh, from my alert, right? These are columns in the data, name, location, and ID. And I'm passing them to the appropriate required uh, input parameters. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when you're using a data set alert to initiate a workflow, if there's going to be more than one record passed along with your alert, you're going to want to ensure that you've got your workflow set up to handle a, a list that, that comes across, right? If, if you look at, at this history of triggered items, um, you can see that, that this happens a lot. Let's find one. Um, uh, it looks like all of these have a, have a singular, <laughs> a singular value. Uh, but you know, if, if there are multiple rows that meet that alert criteria when your data set updates, it's going to pass multiple rows. You're going to have multiple IDs, multiple names, and multiple locations. So ensure your required start parameters on your workflow um, are lists. Even if it's a list of one, it's still going to work fine. You just want to make sure that, uh, that, that we're, we're capturing that list of values. Otherwise, it's only going to process the first one. If you got any questions, comments, thoughts, uh, hit us up in the community. I'm um, looking forward to seeing and hearing about all the exciting things you guys are doing.